Okay, welcome back, and uh, we're going to talk now about uh, wave superposition and uh, interference. So what is superposition? It's actually a really convenient way to describe the interaction between uh, two waves. Uh, it's called the vector sum, and we have to say vector sum because it's, it's really um, it's, it's algebraic. Uh, it's also another way of saying uh, sum. So in other words, if you have a, uh, you know, positive and negative uh, sums, they can uh, uh, tend to cancel each other. So here's an example of two uh, crests coming together. And if, when these two meet in the middle, they're going to produce a, uh, a vector sum of something that looks twice as, as uh, high in amplitude. Likewise, if we have uh, two pulses, even though these are offset, uh, these are going to create, tend to cancel each other out. And there will be essentially, for a brief period of time, when they overlap, no uh, amplitude, even though there's still energy in, in the waves, two respective waves. So here's uh, an animation that shows that. Uh, and this might be traveling a little too fast to, to perceive what's going on. So we have some applets also that, that we can use. Um, and here are a couple of them. So let's go to one of them right now. So I'll start this here. And you can see that you have the uh, red wave traveling from one direction, the blue wave traveling from the other. And when they meet in the middle, they, they create the vector sum, which is shown by the yellow wave. Uh, and we can change the amplitude so that one of them is smaller than the other. And we can actually stop this boom right there and walk through it. And you can see when they over it. So if you look at the vertical column right here, the blue height from the rest position and the red height from the rest position, if we add those together, we get the yellow. And that's going to be true at every place along the wave. So when we, they're both a maximum right there, it looks like, we have... Uh, uh, essentially, for, for, for this distance right here, the amplitude of the red wave and the blue looks like it's about half. So the yellow would be about one and a half amplitudes of the, compared to the red wave. And then off they go in opposite directions. Uh, we can also um, put, put them out of phase and demonstrate uh, destructive interference. So if we walk through this one, here we see the, the sum. Notice the sum in the middle here is always going to be zero. And as when they finally overlap, right there, they effectively cancel each other out. And then they move on to the respective destinations. Uh, see the other applet is this Pulse Edition applet. It's like the one that, that we saw but was moving too fast. But this one we can step through. Uh, so here's, hmm, move up real quick. So let's try uh, a, this one here. We'll step through here. So we have Yeah, I don't see anything happening here. Okay, so there we go. So let's reset and we'll step through. So here we have let's do um yeah, so I'll let you step through and this looks like it's uh, very small steps for this one and more coarse steps for this one. So we can see we have unequal amplitudes. Uh, this is plus two, this is a minus one. So as we continue to step through, when they finally overlap right there, there's a decrease in the amplitude. It should be about plus one right there if we do the small steps right there. So for a brief instant in time, they overlap. And then they continue on as if there were just two ships that passed in the night. So you're welcome to uh, experiment with those applets. Uh, so here's an example of, um, we have light, we have constructive interference for two different slits. You have a source one and source two. And you have this light here. And when they meet together at the center in the screen, they are in phase. And that is some integral number of the wavelength uh, between them so that they will create a bright spot. However, if you're off-center from your screen, from your source, you're going to have, there's a, there's a possibility, there's a distance here. And it depends on the distance between the slits and the wavelength of light and the distance over here that you're going to have a half a wavelength difference between the two and the waves will be out of phase and then they will create a dark or quiet zone, which is called uh, destructive interference. Uh, another great way to see this is with this ripple tank applet. Uh, this is another link right here. Um, this this one will click on this will generate this sample. This is a fantastic applet. It's really worth worth seeing. 
and you come up here and have two sources. And you can see we have this uh, effect where we have um, uh, constructive interference here where we have the bright and dark zones and then we have this kind of dead area, gray area right here with which would be if you were sitting here and these were sound sources these you would hear nothing right there. Um, might be neat to do a 3D view here. There we go. So here you can see you have the two sources. I think I can rotate this, yeah. Somehow. And we have the uh, two sources, and here we have the dead zone here in destructive interference, and here we have constructive interference here. So this is a great applet. You can uh, you can experiment with that yourself. And this is just another uh, link to a uh, um, wave tank. I'll let you do that one too in your own time. And I think uh, so. Here we have um, kind of a graphic, a superposition of two waves. So when the sources overlap, you can see we generate some kind of pattern here with the peaks. And you can see the pattern changing slowly. There we go. So the interference pattern depends on the distance between the two sources. This is a speaker here, and this is a speaker here also. So if they're um, outputting the same sound, that happened awfully fast. There we go. That's a little better. As they zoom in, you can watch this pattern being created there. And you can see that these here where the uh, overlappings are, if we were to look at these a little more closely, if we were to put a microphone here, we'd have uh, alternating uh, dead and loud zones. Here's um, another looking here. We have uh, the peaks and trough represented as different colors. So you can see that like right along this line right here, the overlappings are the same color, whereas overlapping along here, they're different colors. So you have a peak and a trough meeting here, which is destructive, and you have peaks meeting here, which is constructive on this line. So you can color code them, so for constructive and destructive. So this color red is your constructive, and for this color purple is destructive. And you see that there are numbers of each of these. You can probably find more. So maximums, maxima and minima. Here's your second maxima. We skipped over this one here. That's fine. And uh, that's it. So there's uh, superposition and interference in a nutshell. So that's that's the end. Okay. See ya.